Okay, this might be my first lunch hour ever with Birdie. I don't know yet. But I feel like right now is the most real. Oh my gosh. That's right. He's not in bed anymore. He's gone down. <laughs> He's working in a golf cart. And I'm like, oh crap, I'm interrupting his nap. Not his nap. He works. He slaves, y'all. He slaves. So when he wants to sleep until noon, I let him sleep until noon. Okay, because he literally slaves. Okay. And, you know, he wouldn't have to sleep so hard if I scooped this hard with him. But, you know, I'm selfish sometimes and he's okay with that. That I'm not up right next. Sometimes I am next to him the whole time. Sometimes I'm not. And he's okay with that. And that's what I appreciate. But, okay. As I was saying. This right now. Is me on my journey. That's what y'all need to follow. Because this is me starting my journey. Like, I have some, cha some chapters in my book written I've given myself six months to write my first book to send the manuscript off I'm one month in six weeks in um, I still have a day job I work for my dad selling office supplies I generally am traveling but right now they have us doing these reports because we just transition softwares and we want to make sure that all the users from this software made it completely into the new software and reports is not my thing but right now I have to do them. So otherwise I'm traveling or I'm going to campuses at the school level. We are, we have a minimum of, a minimum of 80 campuses we have to see each month. So, I only have 80, maybe, yeah, it's 80. So anyway, yes. So I'm still in the midst of having to do a day job to get my, you know, my pay. I have to make a living, it's my livelihood right now. As I write my book so that once my dad retires, I have the opportunity to stay with the company or that he sells to, sold to, or get back to, back on track as this has let me, uh, has been the perfect job to get my creativity going again. So in the off hours, I can actually work on what I really want to do. And that is leading people, guiding people, inspiring people. Um, to see the best version of themselves, to be that version, because I see that inversion. And so I like to help get that version out of you in whatever way we see fit together. So first it's going to be a book about my different journeys, um, different books, different ideas I got from people, different life lessons I've pulled from things that they've told me or taught me and ones that now work for me today which still hold true or that a book maybe I wrote 10 or read 10 years ago 20 years ago remembering something that I read that now is applicable before that it really wasn't I feel like finally all my experiences are coming together so yes and when I, so my lunch today real quick so y'all also know. No, but no, let me start from the beginning. Okay. This is literally lunch hour for Bert, with Birdie. And I will upload it like this until I have a podcast, until I have more. But right now I have an hour a day I can film consistently. And so, yeah, I may just upload it once a week for now. Possibly every day, Monday through Friday, like a soap opera. Maybe that's what this will be. Actually, that was when I first ever got into a TV show with soap operas. And it was when I had my Dante, my first kid. Mm. These lunch hours will be all over the place at first because it's just me figuring out what I'm going to do. What really thrives with people. So, okay, back to lunch. I'm also ADD, self-regulated, with exercise, THC gummies. Exercise, creative thinking, complete awareness of what, where I thrive, where I don't, and sticking to the where I thrive. Knowing what makes me thrive and tick. Um, and what gets me out of a negative pattern. Okay. So there'll be lots of bouncing back and forth. But 
that's what also is going to be so fascinating for y'all to watch. Because I feel so much like you. Like, I'm all of y'all together in some way, and you'll relate in some way. And as I um, self-therapize myself or see what works in this whole new manner that I'm doing things, I don't even know what I really just said. Because it kind of sounded smart, but then it sounded really wordy. Which is why, again, I think a book will be well, or something very topics we know we're going to talk about and set in stone. Okay, so for what I'm having for lunch, though, is a manwich that my mother-in-law made and tater tots. So that's what I'm having for lunch, dude. This is how I'm getting my book done. If in this hour, for sure, I spend doing something creative um, and then just writing. Right now, I'm just talking. But I'll also watch this back for ideas. But I wanted you to get a sense for like my actual real life. Like this is why I think anybody can do this because I'm doing it while I hold down a day job. I still have two girls at home. Um, I have three more in college. And then Jason, my husband has two in college and out of college. One's a flight instructor. So I would feel like there's so much going on in my life and that I could use as an excuse to not do this, you know? Like I could be tired, I could be like, ugh, I do enough, but I know to get, if I really want to live my dreams, now that I can actually focus on them, I know I have to do something every day to get there. So that's me showing you, once I get there, you'll see in the process for me at the bottom almost, not the bottom bottom, it took me, it took me five years since my bottom bottom to now feel comfortable being me and sharing that with the world without too much judgment even though we know judgment comes when you put yourself out there which I'm okay with judgment now but I before I would have been like they're judging me they don't know my story all that stuff but what I've realized that your story comes out. So whether they judge you or not, it doesn't matter. However you truly are as a person, that's the person they'll see over time. So I'm like, you know, they may judge me up front, but I'm really not that person. They'll see that over time. You know, if they're misjudging me, they could also be judging me very well to where anytime I walk into a room, they're like, oh, here comes Miss Berkey. She's going to talk right here off. Let's go. Um, and I'm also very aware of that as well. So this all has to just do with, yeah, me sharing my journey with y'all so y'all know you can do it too. Because I feel like if I do it by example, then y'all can do it in your own way. But I believe anybody can do what they want to do. Whatever your dream is. And then, second thing. Okay. So right now I live in an RV actually have for the last few years um as me and my husband have thought about buying an rv park or starting an rv park we started living at them just living in them at different rv parks around houston we've traveled you know uh through the states staying at different rv parks and seeing what we liked what we didn't like what worked what didn't work whether it was for a short term short term uh, short term tenant or a long-term resident one and we're still, we're looking for property now, but right now, yeah, I live in an RV. And so that could be embarrassing. In fact, I probably was embarrassed when I first thought about it, like, oh man, you know? Uh, but then you meet the people who live here who are long-term residents and they're not always what you expect. You know, we have a very generalized view of how life is and, or why people do what they do. And we judge them because we have this stereotypical version of how we see things. Hollywood, over stereotypes, rednecks living in trailer homes. Um, now, don't get me wrong.